Today we're going to launch our biggest, most complex and coolest terrarium where a variety of animals will live together. The idea came about after we received an ant farm. In just a minute we assembled the acrylic walls and started setting up the arena we created. The kit included a bag of green sand which the creator probably intended to represent a lawn. It's really cool that they included this little shovel in the kit. We used it to level out our sand. The decorations included a wooden house that you can assemble, a small tree, and even this skull printed on a 3D printer. A couple of little things like ladybugs and pebbles and the beautiful arena is ready. Oh wait, we almost forgot about the trash container. Yes, yes, ants are clean and they take their trash out and later we'll show you how to teach them to do that. Of course the ants need to drink and for that there's a small test tube that needs to be filled with boiled water and plugged with cotton. It's also very important for some chambers in the farm to be humid and for that there are two openings where you can easily pour water using a pipette. In these humid chambers the colony will hatch new ants from eggs while in the dry ones they will store and keep their supplies. Initially the ant colony is very small and to make it easier to observe them you can close off other chambers of the farm with special partitions. As the ant family grows you can open up new chambers and watch how the ants settle in. This option is perfect for those who don't want to fuss around and build a formicarium themselves. But that's definitely not our case, so we started coming up with our biggest terrarium. There was a lot of work to do, and at first we decided to head out to the forest to see the birds, wolves and squirrels. And while there was still no snow, we gathered some forest litter, beautiful moss, twigs and stones. We packed all of this into a container, sprayed it with water, and our moss waited for over a month while we worked on the terrarium. We came up with this design that's a full meter long, and for the first time we had to make a stand for the terrarium and even buy glass instead of looking for it in dumpsters, can you believe it? For the first time we also used black instead of clear sealant, and a new method of gluing and thanks to that we ended up with some really cool smooth seams. When the sealant dried, it was time to create a place for the ants to live. The idea is for it to look like an ant nest in cross-section. We drew the rough outlines, laid the entire terrarium on its side, and mixed some construction plaster, slightly coloring it to a natural shade. After the plaster dried, we took it out of the terrarium and drew various ant tunnels and chambers. It didn't dry completely, we easily traced everything we drew in it with screwdrivers. Next, we placed it in its spot in the corner of the terrarium. We accidentally broke off a small piece, but we hope it won't affect our design. Now we could fill the terrarium with soil. We started with small pebbles. We filled 150 liters, placing driftwood in the terrarium. A stream was planned from stones, so we rearranged them for an hour. Water pumped up and flowed down stones. A stream was to flow from stones in the terrarium. We used a pump to draw water and create a stream. First we needed to add fertile soil and plant the plants. The water was supposed to be drawn from the aquatic part of the terrarium using a pump, rise up and flow down the stones to create a stream. But first we needed to add a layer of fertile soil and plant the plants. There were plenty of options, but to make the terrarium look even more like a forest, we chose this myrtle tree. We planted it along with the collected forest moss near the entrance to the ant nest. Now let's return to our stream. You can't just take and pour water. If the river isn't watertight, all the water will seep into the ground and soon our forest will turn into a real swamp. We tried to solve the problem using paraffin and plastic wrap, but soon we just got frustrated and replaced everything with a big trash bag. Now the water was fully returning back to the aquarium, and we disguised the bag with pebbles and covered the riverbank with moss. And here an old moss-covered tree has rotted and fallen across the river. Everything related to the forest was ready, but we were going to have a whole lake in the terrarium filled with lots of living creatures. 
and he started to arrange the underwater part. According to the plan, land creatures will be able to descend right to the water along this driftwood, while aquatic animals will come ashore. We poured about 40 liters of tap water and slightly arranged the underwater zone of the terrarium. The driftwood was covered with moss and underwater plants were planted in the soil. By the way, for these very plants we bought and put a piece of volcanic lava there. They say it's good for them. And of course we installed the filter because that's where beneficial bacteria settle that filter the water. And also, if you connect a hose to it, it will oxygenate the water. In order for the aquarium to be ready for its inhabitants, at least a couple of weeks must pass. Only then will the water be suitable for life. But we have animals that are ready to explore the forest and the depths of our terrarium right now. In this colony there are about 20 ants, a queen and a bunch of eggs and larvae. We connected the tube to the entrance of their new ant hill and started observing. A very bright light was shining on the test tube and real panic began inside it. Ants like to be in the shade and our ant hill was not as brightly lit as the test tube. The ants realized that an urgent evacuation was needed. And just a couple of minutes later, the bravest ant crawled up the hose and seeing that there was something interesting there, returned back. Believing him, two more ants headed that way. Realizing that this new home was way cooler than their tube, the ants began the relocation. Trusting him, two more ants headed that way. Realizing that this little home was way cooler than their tube, the ants began the relocation. In about 20 minutes, they had already moved all their young and piled them up in a big heap. And lastly, barely fitting through the passage, the ant queen moved in. While the ants were in ant shock from the huge new home, we decided to show the new place to the three forest lizards. They were given to us by a girl from whom we bought our gecko. She said that these lizards were rescued from children who caught them in the forest and played with them. We couldn't return them to the forest because it's already very cold there and they wouldn't be able to hibernate like other lizards. We decided to keep them, and until summer comes we'll keep them in our terrarium. It's good that they can't crawl on the glass like our gecko because our terrarium doesn't have a lid. The lizard settled in pretty quickly, and since it was already late in the evening they burrowed into the moss to spend the night. For now, only these lizards and the colony of ants live in the terrarium. But since it's very big, it can easily become a home for a bunch of other animals. And it's you who can decide which animals we will put in there. Write your suggestions in the comments and of course it's important that these creatures can coexist together. In the next video we will add the animals you suggested and show how the existing ones survive. Maybe we'll be able to create a small natural complex where plants, animals and microorganisms coexist closely, just like in a real forest. Give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then there will be even more videos like this.